Ice up. Ice what? Whoa, whoa, baby. Poke it out. Poke it out. Poke it out. What's up, everyone? It is Wednesday. Well, technically Tuesday night, but it's Wednesday, so you guys know what that means. We're back with another video. The Madden video, I don't know if I posted it at a wrong time on Monday, but it completely. If you saw it, you saw it. Um, it. It's gone now. It is erased from existence. I don't know if the school starting affected that, but um, so I, I, I deleted that video, so that is no longer up. Um, in, in, you know, what should I say? To make up for that, I'm going to be streaming three times this week, and um, I will be posting thir uh, Wednesday and Friday, videos on Wednesday and Friday. So you guys will have a lot coming from me in the next couple of days if you so please to um, join into the things that I, I, I am doing for these next couple of days. Go ahead and uh, stop by because, you know, that means the world. But with, with that being said, to be honest, that wasn't that long of an intro this time. And the topic I want to talk about is one that I've seen uh, getting covered a lot on the first takes and on the Colin Cowherd show, the, the, the herd, and and stuff like that. Some things that have been you know completely tossed around and and completely used to obliteration by the media um, when when talking about the New Orleans Saints. So the main topic that is on everybody's mind for whatever reason when discussing us is regression. Now, uh, in this video, I'm not going to be talking about why the Saints will regress like everybody else is. I'm going to be talking about why the New Orleans Saints will not be regressing, and I'm going to try to use as much statistical evidence as I can so it's not, you know, biased as, as you know, coming from the mouth of a Saints fan, but um, if I were face-to-face -face with somebody who believed that we could regress, I, I guarantee you I could change their mind. You put me on the Colin Cowherd show, I'll give him a lesson. So we're going to ha we're going to go and talk about why the Saints will not regress in the year 2019. So let's go ahead and get into it. Now, the first thing I would like to talk about that nobody should be able to doubt or shy away from whatsoever is the issue with Michael Thomas that took place last season that everybody noticed. Now, people that aren't avid watchers of the New Orleans Saints or don't tune into the games or don't even look at statistics after the games are played will not know that Michael Thomas was receiving more than half of the team's targets. The second leading receiver on the team was Alvin Kamara off of checkdowns. So there was, there's a clear problem when your number two wide receiver is your running back. Um, it's either they're really good or you have nobody else to throw the ball to. Michael Thomas was literally double teamed every play. I've, I've preached this so many times. I'm not going to stick too long on this topic, but we're finally going to have some weapons to hopefully combat the fact that Michael Thomas was getting double teamed and was not able to produce as well as he was in the beginning half of the season towards the end. Um, the Dallas Cowboys game was Michael Thomas and Andrew Brees' downfall. Um, after that happened, they couldn't get anything going because there wasn't anything to get going. Michael Thomas was double covered and it put the offense's hands into a bunch of undrafted free agent rookie wide receivers, i.e. Austin Carr, Keith Kirkwood, and them. And I'm not saying they're bad and I'm not saying that the group of undrafted free agent rookie wide receivers we have this year is going to help us. I'm just saying, given the circumstance, there's an issue there. The wide receiver we drafted, Traquan Smith, can very well step up. We've seen flashes of him versus the Philadelphia Eagle and the Washington Redskins, so I hope to see him uh, get pushed by Michael Thomas to persevere and capture that spark he has. Emmanuel Butler and Cyril Grayson Jr. are also two receivers that come to mind when thinking about training camp sparks and people that really lit up training camp. Emmanuel Butler has not stopped, and we will be seeing him in some preseason action later this week, so we will be able to see if what we have been seeing in training camp can translate into a game scenario, so that's going to add a really big implication as to what, if the New Orleans Saints are going to regress or not. Another wide receiver I want to point out is someone that has actually had some playing time on the field. Lil Jordan Humphrey versus the Vikings had two receptions, 42 yards, and one touchdown. Now, he only had two receptions, but that just shows you how much he does when the ball is thrown his way. Two catches on two targets, 42 yards, and one touchdown on the two targets he received is pretty impressive to me. And the touchdown he got was extremely elusive, something that someone his size should not be able to do, and it just makes it all the more impressive. Cyril Grayson Jr. also had some good catches during the preseason game. Um, I can't re read you his exact stats right now, but I remember that 32-yard bomb he did catch from Taysom Hill, Teddy Bridgewater. Teddy Bridgewater in the two-minute drill. I remember that. It was an extremely good play. He, I seen a lot of promise from Cyrus Grayson Jr. It looks like he's getting his football mechanics down. Along with all of the wide receivers we have that are developing and looking like they're going to turn into strong National Football League players, 
We added Jared Cook, who had 896 yards and six touchdowns in Oakland last year. Um, be, uh, Jared Cook had a better season than Benjamin Watson, Josh Hill, and everyone behind him combined. And Jared Cook is that tight end we have been looking for since Jimmy, Jimmy Graham's departure. It, it's scary how much we actually need Jared Cook. He's going to open up the field for so many different things. Mike, Michael Thomas cannot be double covered anymore is the point I'm trying to get at. There are different wide receivers. There are different tight ends. There are different weapons we have to go ahead and utilize that throwing it just to Michael Thomas and Alvin Kamara in the backfield is not going to be the situation this year. It's going to be a very, very important thing to look out for. If you want to look for signs that the Saints are going to regress, look at their wide receiver play. Because of what happened last year and because of what I've been seeing from this year, I do not think the wide receivers are going to let us down again. I think the wide receivers, that strong young wide receiver core, along with the veteran leader in Jared Cook at the tight end position, will open up the offense to plenty of new plays and give us some big dynamic explosions that we've been looking for and that we desperately needed during the back half of the season. Because our wide receiver and tight end groups improved so drastically, that will not be a reason we regress and that is not a focal point people can point on in this specific scenario. This is not a reason the New Orleans Saints will regress. I think it is a reason the New Orleans Saints get better. The defensive side of the ball is something to talk about as well. You have Cameron Jordan who is always extremely good, a 10 sack a season guy. Demario Davis leads Leading that extremely fine young linebacking core. Sheldon Rankins is going to be returning from injury and Marcus Davenport has showed a lot of promise to be that pass rush dominant extremely good defensive end that the New Orleans Saints drafted him to be. The corners are also very reliable. Marshawn Lattimore is a number one lockdown. Eli Apple after having a whole offseason to learn the playbook which he only had a game or two last year before he was straight thrown into the fire to try to save a 25th overall in the league secondary, and he did it. He's going to have an entire offseason to go ahead and learn the playbook, play with his teammates, get comfortable. It's going to be an entirely different situation. Now, you've seen that long touchdown he allowed in the preseason game. One, it's preseason. Two, that was Adam Thielen. Three, it was good coverage. Look at his face mask. That glare is lethal. Patrick Robinson is someone that people keep forgetting about. He has had a ton of good plays in training camp and is coming back off of that injury. I think that Patrick Robinson's impact is going to be a lot bigger than people, what people are giving him credit for. And along with the corners, you have the safeties. The New Orleans Saints filled one of their biggest holes on the defensive side of the ball by drafting some safety help. Saquon Hampton and Chancey Gardner-Johnson have filled in quality depth need and have been performing extremely well in both pass coverage, run stopping, everything you want in a safety. They're hard hitting. These guys are the real deal and are perfect backups to Marcus Williams and Von Bell and they can be thrown in with some playing time. They have been playing phenomenal over the past couple of weeks. One thing that people like to talk about a lot when it comes to talking about the New Orleans Saints declining is the fact that we lost Max Unger. And I understand anytime a team loses a Pro Bowl center, there's going to be some problems. Eric McCoy looked flawless. He looked fantastic during the uh, preseason opener. Now there were two sacks that were that, that happened with Teddy Bridgewater. Teddy Bridgewater got sacked twice. That could partially be drawn back to the fact that he was holding the ball too long. And everybody else, there were no there was no Teron Armstead. There was no Ryan Ramschek. There was no Andrus Pete. Nobody on that offensive line was starting. Nobody except for Eric McCoy. He's going to be starting this year. He has the job basically locked up. Seeing Eric McCoy bully people, push people over, hold and, and grasp and push back NFL defensive linemen, NFL caliber defensive linemen is really a sight and it gives me a lot of hope for his future. He only allowed one sack over 1,500 snaps in his collegiate career. I think, I think he's going to be great for the New Orleans Saints. Do I think he's going to be a Pro Bowl center the day he steps onto the regular season field? No. I do think he will have his rookie kinks, but I think he has the same potential, God forbid me if I'm wrong, of Ryan Ramschek. I think he can play just as well as Ryan Ramschek, but, you know, on the other side of the offensive line. So Eric McCoy is a huge bright spot. Uh, Max Unger is not going to cause the detriment to our offensive line. Drew Brees knows how to elude pressure just fine. If he needs to, he will do it. Another thing I would like to talk about is the, the, the play of Teddy Bridgewater. Now, this one isn't too relevant as far as regression goes. I've already covered the wide receivers. That will be a, a plus, a reason we get better. Jared Cook will be a reason we get better. 
better. Safety depth will be a reason we get better. And uh, Eric McCoy will be a reason that we do not regress. We hold still in that part of the category, on that part of the team. Um, Teddy Bridgewater is had, uh, performed very well versus the Minnesota Vikings, and that's something that I really like to see because quality backups in the NFL are hard to find, and if anything, God forbid, were to happen to Drew Brees, say he got caught a common cold and couldn't play for a week. Teddy Bridgewater went 14 for 19 for 134 yards and one touchdown. With our running game and our defense, that is enough to win us a game. Teddy Bridgewater can be thrown in in late game or early game situations and lead the team to victory from what I've seen. Of course, we lost the first game, but the, the entire secondary was just the defense... We didn't win that game because of the defensive side of the ball. The starters that started didn't want to play too hard and put their life on the line for a preseason game, so they were playing laxed, um, a bunch of zone, squishy zone coverage, things like that. I do think Teddy Bridgewater is a serviceable backup, and that is something that will always make a team better. So I think right there, that's another addition to the team as far as points go. Now the last thing, that the, one of the most important things I would like to talk about is the misconception of Latavius Murray and Mark Ingram. Now I know Latavius Murray is not Mark Ingram for more than just play style. Uh, emotional attachment is something that's huge there as well. But he's serviceable and I have their stats from 2018 written down right here. And yes, I did take the four game suspension into consideration. Now when you look at Latavius Murray versus Mark Ingram in 2018, Mark Ingram, he played 12 games and started six. He had 138 rushes, 645 yards, and six touchdowns, with averaging 4.7 yards per carry. Keep in mind, his offensive line was ranked second in the league for run blocking. That's important. Latavius Murray in 2018 played 16 games, only started six as well, had two more rushes at 140 rushes than Mark Ingram, had 578 yards and six touchdowns as well while averaging 4.1 yards per carry. So he had about 50 yards less than Mark Ingram on two more rushes. He had the same amount of touchdowns and averaged 0.6 less yards per carry with his run block, his offensive line ranking 23rd in the league for run blocking. 23rd. He put up similar numbers to Mark Ingram with the similar amount of attempts, only two more attempts, with the 23rd ranked offensive line when it comes to run blocking. The New Orleans Saints had the second. That is enough for me right there to prove to you that Latavius Murray can and will go out and do what Mark Ingram did just as well, giving him his athleticness, his strongness, his speed, Giving him an offensive line to work with is going to work wonders. So, why will, the, why will the New Orleans Saints not regress in 2019? The wide receivers have improved drastically. There will be no double-teaming Michael Thomas, a.k.a. you will not take our passing game out of the game. Jared Cook, enough said. Saquon Hampton and Chancey Gardner-Johnson have secured the only hole that I could think of in depth as far as the safety depth. Eric McCoy is replacing Max Unger, so that's an offset. Teddy Bridgewater is a back, a solid backup quarterback. It's a plus. And Latavius Murray versus Mark Ingram, that's another offset. There is nothing that happened within the past year that can let, sit here and speak to me and tell me that it is important enough, that is, it is vital enough to the New Orleans Saints that they will regress more than three games. Our floor for me is 10-6, and six and our ceiling is undefeated. I don't think the New Orleans Saints, if, if the New Orleans Saints go 12-4, and four, that's fine. I don't really count that as a regression. A regression to me is three games or more. Um, so I don't think we're going to regress. I don't know if any of you think we're going to regress or not. Go ahead and let me know down below in the comment section. If I missed out on anything, which I wrote this script in 10 minutes, go ahead and let me know what I missed out on. If you guys want to see more content like this, let me know. Um, let me know what videos you want to see next, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Adios.